Nice, but LeBron following through. Doesn't have the arrow, but does have the damage. Ice on the turret, though. It's going to get bounced on Broken Blade doing it himself. The one wagon. But now they have to take down Noah. Noah wants redemption. Wonder moving in. But that's a Zeri. And it's piloted by Noah. He's not taking shit from anybody. Quadra. This is no man's land. Overheat tries to get Mickey, but will not the sky. It's falling again, though, in the meantime. And G2 buys their time. The cold of winter in Berlin breaks to spring. What once was grey gives way to a scene of breathtaking colors. Life awakens again. Yet, defiant to these changes, stands G2. Spring may have escaped them once before, but now, as we leave behind the icy storms, our winter split champions rises to conquer the winds. Meet our defending split champions, father of the top lane, Broken Blade. Maestro in the jungle, Yike. Agent of Chaos in the mid lane. Cats! The glorious executioner himself, Hans Sama! The unseen threat is the deadliest. It's Mickey X! Joined by their coaches, Dylan and Rodrigo. Give it up for G2 Esports! As it was always written, so it shall be. Their eternally faded rivals, Fnatic, blossom once again in conquest of victory. Your second MSI representative, blossoming into a pillar of top lane. It is Oscar Rinin. El Cachorro de la Jungla, Razor. Master of Control and Harmony. Humanoid! Destroyer of hope, it is Noah! Creator of Blaze in the bot lane, June! Joined by their coaches, Nightshare and Gax, Fnatic! A tale as old as the season. It always comes down to this battle. Fnatic and G2 dominate the LEC yet again. Both will compete against the Titans of MSI, but only one will rise today and hoist the Spring Shield. The stage is set for an epic battle on the Rift. The LEC Spring Final starts now. Kicking that one off, maybe hoping to just get some summoners or some spells out of VTO, but he interrupts the first dash. That's gonna be clutch. VTO pushed away, taken down. Oscar, the timing, absolute perfection. The pick onto VTO will end up costing them. Vitality hoping to get something back. The feathers out, but Noah off to the side. Uncontested, the knock up there. Carthy's got no room to play. And surely this is it. It's Fnatic once again taking down Vitality, moving into top three in the LEC. They really are similar to us, so it will just depend on who plays better. Fnatic could be challenging if they are on good form. If any team, it's probably them that can make it close. Fnatic break the hearts of the BDS fans. They will lock their spots. We should come prepared and ready to match their levels from game one. Otherwise, if we are one zero one or zero two, I can see it might be harder to reverse <laughs> sweep. Fnatic bot lane, we play a lot of two twos together. They're asking us every day if we want to play. They are trying very hard to get better and to win. So I respect that. The falling star as the skies come down. Faces of BDS. It's a triple already for Noah. Noah has led them into the arc, and in the end, it's five for Noah. For Noah.
They are coming, obviously, to take those titles away from us. If someone wants to be our rival, we are welcoming that. Make us stronger. We need to stay vigilant, stay humble, and take it game by game so we don't make the same mistakes that we did in the past. Will it be a flip to the side of the series? Who knows? Cap comes in, shoves there. It is a flip! BDS, you were the chosen one! And you betrayed us! G2 are still Europe's champions, moving to another grand final. This team is the region. It is always kind of hard. They can play a lot of things in every role and different styles. It would be nice to win everything, so then we can say we were just like the best by far. No one could come even close. And welcome everybody to the caster desk for the first game in this spring split final series between G2 Esports and Fnatic. I'm Dracos, joined by Dagda and Vettius for our final best of five of the season before MSI kicks off. And we, I mean, we couldn't have it any other way. Yeah, yeah, the, the script writers. Yeah, I mean, it's been a little while, but I'm excited. I yeah, mean, they mix it up. They bring it back. Yeah. Nostalgia's <laughs> in. They're making a new Ghostbusters. We're making a new G2 I mean, I fanatic. will say, it was a little scary after the first few weeks. I mean, at the beginning of the split, people were all in on the Fnatic hype train, the potential, what this team could do. But then they kind of faltered off. They've had a few shaky performances. And even yesterday, we saw how they struggled at the start, but they seemed to find their groove and the momentum really cowered them forward. The problem is that momentum doesn't always work against a team like G2 Esports, and I'm hoping that they show us something strong starting off in this <laughs> that's, series. Sorry, that's like a romantic te teaser yeah. for Jonah. I mean, that Jonah's just charming is getting ready to show some of his charming plays today. Yeah, can, we, can we get two clips of him doing the showmaker fist into the, you know, the, the, he could be your angle or your devil audience, depending on how you're feeling. Uh, but yeah. I'm excited for this draft. Will it be a lane swap, gentlemen? Will they decide I, to go over yeah, the yeah. standard two versus like, two? We could talk about momentum. We could talk as, you know, Fnatic have come out said, you know, they're an emotional team, they get good practice, they have good experiences on stage, they're going to perform higher maybe than people would expect them to in this final, but oh, lane swap just takes away so much of your momentum if you're not ready for that strategy. It doesn't let you, you know, practice or utilize so many of the things that you practice in the week. At the moment, though, Fnatic are still scared of a very dangerous bot lane coming through for Fnatic, already taking away a lot of those aggressive things. Last time these two faced off in the semifinals, it was the Kalista ban in replacement for that Lucian ban. Rel going to be taken off the board, so not fully surprised to see the bans thus far. It's been pretty bog standard on both sides. Interestingly, the first pick is going to be the Rek side for Broken Blade, obviously one of the picks that Oscar has also been pretty focused on. The G2 Esports Vi ban, pretty standard. Volba ban also coming out as well, trying to limit some of the early impact from Razork at the very least. Rumble is a champion that we don't really put as a high priority in this series specifically. But we think globally, Rumble is a terrifying champion to play against and has often been used as an answer into the Rek side. I'm curious if whether or not Fnatic will look towards that as right now they're hovering around the Varus. Yeah, I actually like this adaptation. So what we've seen traditionally from Fnatic is they'll go for Varus Ash, and then that's just kind of opening up for G2 to go for some sort of lane swap. Instead, they pick the Zac, decent matchup into the Rek side, but it also means that, hey, if they go for some sort of weird lane swap, we get to respond by either picking a support that we're happy to roam around with, with this virus, or we can actually take the action this third rotation. But <laughs> uh, Tristana locked in, Gentlemen, already saying we're probably going for the lane swap. Lane lane swap. swap. Yeah. So we haven't really seen it that much, but two of the best champions, Jinx and Tristana, yeah. they function the best just because of how quickly they can take towers. There's oh, a it's Zion, confirmed. The it's the lane swap. In. So now the beauty is, do Fnatic know how to play against it? Sure. Um, Many analysts have talked about how back in the day, there were many tactics you could use to address that. One of them is the early invade to get a very deep ward into the lane to be able to identify who actually walks the lane. But then the adaptation to that was teams would fake, walk over the lane, recall, and then actually send their bot lane from top to bot again. There's a lot of potential mind games depending on what Fnatic's approach are as they round out their first half of the draft with an Azir. And the thing about when you play a lane swap, it's on screen, it's gonna look maybe not as flashy, not something you're used to when you play a lot of solo queue, but it requires a ton of active communication. You have to be constantly assessing where you're assigning lane, where you're maneuvering on the map. It's very communication heavy, even if execution, it just looks like guys moving around trading farm. So need to see how Fnatic match pace here, if they can keep up with what G2 are cooking, because they have a Zac, who's pretty good in a lane swap situation. They have a Vars, who isn't the best tower pusher, but if Fnatic have or can find more tools to set themselves up for success, there are options for them to disrupt the lane swap that, you know, BDS, especially in their first game, really struggled against. Yeah, still though, we're gonna guess at least Caps focused on the second half of this draft from Fnatic, making sure that the Azir has nothing fucking to come out against. 
I still think Caps would be relatively okay. You can go towards something like the Orianna if you really want to. You can still play for these late game team fights because oftentimes that's kind of what happens when we get these lane swaps is scaling mid laners because you're going to be relatively untouched for the majority of it. Unless, well, we saw BB on Zach the last time just poke his head into mid lane just to disrupt things and try and help out Caps a little bit. I mean, we saw it in the LPL today, right? Mid laners level eight, everyone else level four, yeah, exactly, level five. Yeah. When you're moving around so much, a lot of experience gets lost for both sides. Is <laughs> that was locked in today? That was locked in. I don't know who he's pointing at, but if it's me, I'm shaking. The doubters. That's all. That's I'm he's pointing at. I, I think I am one of the doubters. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might be pointing at me. Zin, of course, for Razor. So he wants something to have a bit of early game agency on. Now, how do G2 round this out? I'm very curious as to what they go with mid. Everyone got to see Chovy's Corky today, and I wonder if Caps is feeling inspired or whether or not he's going to stick to something more traditional, something like the Orianna. So far throughout playoffs, he's been limited to Talia, Azia, and Aurelian Sol. None of those are available, so he's going to have to show something today. Okay. How much are we, oh, we going to get the Vega? Oh, We're going to oh get Caps' Vega. Has he ever played Vega? But when I think of Caps, I don't think of this champion. Who who, who do you think of? Nemesis, <laughs> who is, who actually. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was like, who do you think of that has played this champion? Huh? Well, obviously, hasn't shown up yet this season. Pretty unique control mage option. The cage, fantastic, especially paired with the other CC that G2 Esports have put together. Um, and is setting us up for a relatively yeah, passive mid lane, but one where, honestly, Humanoid's gonna have to be careful. The cage combined with the Rek'Sai early pressure can be pretty difficult to play against. Yeah, not fully surprised to see the Lulu coming across, though. This has been something that we saw paired with the Jinx already. It's that terror taking. Uh, as Aragon's breakdown showed, you take the attack speed rune, you take the Molish as well, and just make sure that you're able to tear through these structures. But Anik, are they really committing? They're gonna commit to us, so. I mean, in theory, yes, you can get more pushing power and take some more of the, the terrors, but realistically, I think you need to hyper-aggressive play that lane to try and win out and put the enemy behind. So I prefer going towards something like the Renata here. You can I still mean, take the Demolish Rune and be fine. We look at Fnatic's comp as a whole, it is very well-rounded, right? You've got a nice early bridge in the form of Zin with a powerful bot lane in the form of both Renata and Varos. You've got late game insurance uh, with the Azir. Assuming Noah's going on hit, he'll also have some more guaranteed late game threat. And you've got the Zac to act as a, a frontline engage with the Renata utility provided behind it. Fnatic composition in terms of fighting, overall very well-rounded with a good bridge from the early game into the mid game. The problem then comes with, yeah, on paper this works, but how does it function into the lane swap that you're expecting G2 to bring out here? Yeah, because when we look at what champion have been successful over our playoffs. Fnatic have a ton of them. Renata so frequently taken away. On paper, if we play standard lanes, Fnatic have a fantastic composition. But Vygar Tristana, a bit of a wild card, and the lane swap, as you mentioned, really the thing that's going to throw a spanner in the works. Can Fnatic keep up? If they can stay even in gold, even in XP, they've got a really powerful composition, but most teams really struggle to make that happen against the lane swap. Yeah, I think that's where I'm... I think you have an okay answer, though. The Zac is relatively okay when it comes to some sort of lane swap. I think as well, if you end up staying on the bottom side of the map here, even though you don't get the uh, as much attack speed coming through in the Renata, you don't have the buff terror plate in the top side, so you should be relatively okay. Find out if it's enough, though. Let's get into it. Our first game, G2 versus Fnatic. Both teams headed to MSI, but only one can take the first seed. Skip out on the first portion of the tournament, get the luxury of that extra time to boot camp, to prepare, have the prestige to lift the shield here in Berlin in front of all of these fans. And here's what I'll say is that Europe, we've got a lot of fans, a lot of dedicated fan bases, but the G2 and the Fnatic crowds, they always come out strong. Today is no different. We're going to be hearing those chants throughout the day for every kill, for all those exciting moments. I'm excited to see how things play out. So what will Fnatic do to address the lane swap that we're all expecting? Tristana, a champion that is very good at securing those early objectives. You can see the rune choice from Mickey, heavily indicating it. And you can see Han Summer literally hovering in top lane. So. Yeah, <laughs> Jun both with Demolish. Towers. It's a PvE early game, folks. So Hans has started his recall a couple of times and is cancelling it. He's just trying to be like, where is this uh, Zach exactly? Because he was down in the ward and he's if Zach is top, cool, we will go top lane and we'll all be fine. But if we start to see the Zach reset, then we actually need to try and turn a match. But it looks like at the moment Fnatic are kind of alright to just hop into this and go, we will go bog standard bot lane and just try and push the terror in answer. Now, I spoke to Finn earlier, and he was talking to me about the best way to handle a lane swap. In his opinion, the first five minutes of the game is where the bot lane two versus two has the greatest advantage because the bot lane tower is weaker than the top lane one. And so his solution in my tip 
when he was talking to me was, you just push as aggressively as you can, as quickly as you can. And I love this rune choice from Jun because it's a clear indication of, you know what, we're not actually going to try and keep up with you, G2. We're not going to try and make this swap back and forth happen. Instead, we're just going to push as quickly as we can to just secure more plates in the early game. And then later, we can decide what we want to do. But in terms of the early advantage, we should be able to build one just because we can take more plates faster than you can. And this is where the Renata is also fantastic because we see Oscar coming in on the bottom side. Scion Q, early levels, instantly clears a wave. Makes it so difficult to pressure to get those plates, but if they find a bit of an angle here, they can poke him down. If they can interrupt the decimating smash, it looks like they're going to go for the four-man dive. Just try to take Broken Blade out of the question equation. Not going to interrupt the Q, it's not going to matter. Dive will be clean. Broken Blade down first blood to Fnatic, but can he clear the wave? That might just be the bigger question. Still trying to walk up, getting all that additional life steal on the top side of the map. G2 already knocking down one plate, and this is the race, but for now, it heavily favors Fnatic. But this is why we see oftentimes the Lulu with the Tristana. Tristana bomb plus the speed up on the attack speed, and then having to demolish is going to do a lot of work for you. And the fact you got all that wave assigned means Bro Broken Blade is level two, whereas Oscar in and it's still level one. Trying to freeze the wave now to give himself a little bit of a pull away so he can get that wave into Terra nice and easily, uh, but also. We'll need to try and soak some of this XP, so in the grand scheme of things, experience difference is going to be in the lead of G2. I thought Wait. Oscar would actually take that wave, but he's choosing to uh, give it up for his bot lane, the priority being that he wants Noah and Jun to be kept up in farm. We talked about how, like, in theory, the sieging power bot side should be quicker. Broken Blade trying to get to the tower. Under tower. Handshake back is good. Nice follow-up, pushing him away. Decimating smash, though. Going to hit two members. Broken Blade going to have the passive as well. And already Oscar's down. That's the passive. They need to, do this they need the to passive. kill Broken Blade as quickly as they can to stop him from taking Oscar out. The healing isn't enough. Oscar is going to survive, but it's on a razor's edge. Couldn't quite manage it. Broken Blade committed the flash as well. Ultimately, though, it's Fnatic with two kills on the board. The crucial thing to keep track of here... Oh, hang on. Are they going to dive him again? Broken Blade, TP gone. He's out of all the resources he has. One more Zac passive, and maybe he can take Oscar, but the heal for extra movement speed. Oh, Noah. Noah gets low, but he walks out crucially, and that's it for Broken Blade. He's got no Flash. He's got no TP. I mean, he it's, hasn't cleared the wave. It's one of those things where Broken Blade being behind is not the concern. It's the fact that Fnatic are getting this early gold, which does have a lot of value. And Oscar Rinning getting that experience from those kills is helping Fnatic mitigate this early advantage each is building top. But BB's getting the wave every time. BB's getting the experience. He's level 3 versus Oscar Rinning's level 1. When you look at that... Because Noah tanked up the tower, he has to reset, and now you're behind in the push and bot side. So even though you're getting the kills, you are still dead even in gold. The big difference maker is Razork, who's managed to get some of that extra gold over. Yike. But in the grand scheme of things, I think G2 are happy with the way things are going. Look at this bot side control from Fnatic. Wards littered absolutely everywhere on that bot side of the jungle. Our observers highlighting it for us now. Fnatic making sure that they have full control over this space so that they can continue to try and pick up what gold they can in the early game as Hans and Mickey are doing the exact same. Because you look at the gold at the bottom, while there is a CS advantage, there's even a plate advantage, it is Noah that's leading in gold thanks to those early kills and assists he's been able to find. Important to have those early goals, especially as the Lethality Varus in the event that we do get back to traditional lanes. We want to be able to leverage that power still, as well as keep BB low. Force him out of lane, if possible. Initial Void Grove going down to Yike. He has to play catch-up now, as we see Oscar going to struggle a bit on the top side. It's a level 2 Zac, but Elastic Slingshot. Without Mickey in the area, they just have no way to stop it. They're going to look for the dive. BB should be able to collect the wave. He will fall again. Broken Blade. Can't shake back, will drop, will try to clear the wave as best as he can, but he's just getting bullied over and over by Fnatic. That said, he continues to pick up CS. He's also preventing access to the tower, so it clears out another wave, whereas you look, Tristana and Lulu already on it. They are already a plate ahead. They end now with the turret plate uh, buff falling. They'll be able to take this tower off of this one as well, then start to rotate onto the bottom side. So you have a level four top laner to a level two. When BB enters the lane against Oscar Inan, BB's going to be significantly stronger. And yes, it's a small gold lead going across towards Noah, but as soon as you get this next tower, it's kind of in like it's insignificant to be perfectly honest. Now it's crucial for viewers that are new to lane swaps that we clarify. Broken Blade is not negative gaming, okay? <laughs> the, his purpose and pursuit is to get as much farm and experience as he can. Yes. And while he is sacrificing some kills, TP. TP now coming. Yes, amazing smash does hit Jun before the second half of the handshake comes out. Ansama can now step up, but has to be careful. Noah's still quite strong. Has the flash, as does Jun, but wants to kick this fight off. Knows the handshake isn't quite there. Jun now going to be in trouble. Time bomb just ticking. Reset there. Not quite waiting it out so beautifully, but the reset is there for Jun. He manages to live. Perfect from the side of Fnatic. Yikes, snipes one. 
Tremor sends now, chasing down Jun. Sweeper as well, but Razzirk is here to cover. Hans getting taken out is perfect for Fnatic. Incredible patience from Jun. It comes Caps though with the collapse. Baby Cage. Caps a little bit slow on the trigger. Needs to back up. Flash forward from Yike. Wants to commit for the kill. That's the ulti. That started off as a massive win for Fnatic. You would invest the TP behind something to get bot lane, but they get the turnaround of the 2v2. But after that, it starts to fall apart a little bit where you get the snipe coming through from Yike and Caps managing to pick up that kill as well. And now BB starting to push Noah out of this bottom side as well. The tempo is really messed up right now. Noah obviously in a very healthy spot, but the fact he lost his support and Han Summer kills relatively early with low death time. This means that he's already back out onto the map. He's pushing in this bot wave. And they're going to start sieging onto these plates. We look back at the dive, though, as the TP comes in from the Tristana. Yeah, as this great TP from Han Sama, it could have worked out beautifully. But the problem was, Jun and Noah just outplay it. Noah is free hitting onto Han Sama the entire time. Jun waits out the bomb. And Noah even flashing over BB's Q as well means that they just barely get the reset off before Noah goes down to Yike. And right here, we're going to see the back half of the play, but it's a situation where they think if they time the bomb perfectly, the bailout won't come through. They miscalculate, they let it expire, it goes through anyway, and if they had just auto-attacked and got the reset from Jun sooner, they might have been able to get the kill, but that slight miscalculation heavily in favor of Fnatic. Good news for G2, though, of course, they are able to get some kills back on the end of that play. And it's important to remember that the fundamental reason as to why you lane swap in the current meta is to take hyper-scaling AD carries away from volatile matchups where they can be punished and put incredibly far behind. You saw the amount of dives Fnatic were pulling off against Broken Blades. Those type of plays are also possible against champions like Tristana and Lulu very early on into the game, which is what G2 wanted to avoid. Now that they've gotten to a certain point in the game where they've secured a few items, they're a lot more comfortable to actually go into this two versus two. The problem for G2 is you look across the board and Noah is sitting at two, one and two and is still in a very powerful position on this virus. Once that level six is reached, don't be surprised to see Fnatic looking to try and make some more plays happen in the bot side of the map. Yeah, Oscarin is also pretty far behind. Oh, it's only just a level five, but a full level behind BB. So BB is gonna be able to exploit this top lane weakness to shove in waves. Now he's level six. And I think this is something we used to see a lot with Sion when he first got reworked was ulting into the bottom lane off of a reset, and I'm looking at where BB's trying to figure out where he wants to go, because could still go for that play and try and punish the fact that Noah doesn't have a flash here. For now, oh, he's looking at the angle. There's really nowhere for him to go topside. Obviously, massive wave. Looks like it's about to crash in the tower for Oscar Renan. I think but he's actually freezing it. Broken Blade can't yeah, step up there. Yes. Oh, this is so frustrating. Broken Blade, of course, still has an LS XP advantage. proud right now. But not for long. Yeah, this is... Oh, bot lane's overextended. Here we go. This is going to be tough. They have perfect vision to try, though. They're going to know that it's coming. They'll just start to back away. Hostile takeover, as well as the ulti from Varus. I mean, all five members of G2 are making their way down. Here comes Yike. Caps has gotten a push in mid. They have to be careful about this dive, though. Caps getting a bit of poke onto Humanoid is a nice way to start things off. Dark Matter. Hitting a little bit already, and G2 aren't too certain about pulling the trigger on there's this a, one. There's a warden behind G2 as well in the middle of the Ten lane. It's about to tick. Zach could just TP down. Broken Boy trying to back away. Flash backwards. Gets a bit of a slowdown there. Arrow now coming in immediately. Broken Blade is forced to ult, but it just means that Hansama and Mickey X are now vulnerable. Hansama leaping out. Flash forward from John with the ulti. Mickey X going berserk in the back line of Fnatic, but it's a Lulu. It does absolutely nothing. Humanoid happy to pick up that kill. Great response from Fnatic. They saw the dive coming from a mile away. And in this window, what does Oscar get to do? Push out top wave. You know it's going to be a while before Broken Blade can respond. He's going to push it as quickly as he can. And while Caps will secure some plates in the mid lane, ultimately it's Humanoid that grabs himself a kill. Difficult early game. Gold still very, very close, but Oscar getting so much time alone and isolated on the top side, bouncing out a lot with a lot of that early game uh, experience discrepancy that we saw. Oscar kind of everywhere on the map right now for Fnatic. Has had a solid early game thus far. Obviously a bit tricky in the lane swap. But a single item now there for Hansama. That's the TP ward you mentioned earlier, Dagda. Coming behind, but this is a tough play to make. Hansama still has flash. A bit over eager there for Humanoid. Yeah, it's fine. He was just going to TP back into the lane either. anyway, so try and force him the bot side, buy some space if it works. Great. If not, Vega's not going to completely push that wave in before he can get mid, although they're actually going to keep him in this bottom side at the moment as Yike takes the uh, void drops. I mean, Noah wanted a reset anyway, right? Yeah. He was out of mana and needed to go back to base, so if anything, they just changed the lane assignments. Jun is staying around here so he can still get a bit of XP while also offering support for Humanoid. Wouldn't be surprised to see them transition over towards mid, and you can see now Noah catching this wave in mid lane. Uh, basically just a way to provide space for Noah to get back and get that reset. Makes sense. 
of course, one more plate. Looks like it's likely to fall here. Human only going to walk up for one last auto attack. Shift the gold just slightly in the favor of Fnatic, of course, with six Void Grubs taken down with that buff active now. Really have to respect the Tristano Lulu. Can't afford to leave them isolated in one of these towers. Stakes a little bit higher in the fights to come if G2 are able to get pushed in one of these lanes. It's also even if you're just late to one of them because bot lane very low, mid lane very low as well. So if you actually start to rotate no down to the bot side, which it looks like they're doing at the moment, it does an open open opportunity for Hans Hammer to just take Clearing mid. the wave, lays down the cage, stun onto Razork. That tower's gonna be a bit of a problem. Ulti now coming in, Cap's gonna start to auto Mickey, but it's just two Yordles. Doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. Nike now waiting. They get the, the TP out from Broken Blade at the very least. Kind of chaos here on the bottom side of the rift. Keep attention as to what the lane assignments are. They sent the Tristana and both AD carries are mid. Here comes Humanoid, Humanoid. Goes for the pushback onto Broken Blade. Maybe not the ideal target there, but gets the knock up onto Oscar. Gets a bit more space. Clean handshake from Jun. Once again, Cavs with a primordial burst to finish off Humanoid. Oscar managing to grab a bunch of healing. The bailout is there as well, but a solo in the mid lane. Noah must have overstepped into the Tristana, and now Oscar has been left for dead in the blink of an eye. G2. Find advantage. G2 blew open the game off that play. You're going to have to push in mid. You're going to get the, the tower mid lane. Yike is chasing Razork out of the jungle. And three kills now to Caps. He is farming Fnatic. Fnatic trying to force these fights end up backfiring. On top of the fact that Han Summer finds himself a solo kill, a solo tower. I've been debating this whole game. Has this lane swap really worked out for G2? And it only takes a single moment for them to say, yeah, we're pretty happy with how things have turned out. <laughs> Might have to see the solo kill again, but regardless, the grub buff paying off there as well. Hansama getting so much additional gold on top of the kill. Caps, though, now in trouble. Doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of mana, but again, the cage just creating Mickey, so much Mickey. space. Mickey, though, getting handshake back at Razork. That should be one dead Lulu. Now Hansama might be in trouble. Well, in a blink of an eye, they got it. In a blink of an eye, they might just give that advantage away. The Ordle's running on the bottom side. I think the problem is Mickey needs to open his eyes. He ends up walking directly into the bot lane where everyone in Fnatic is there and just gets completely caught out. I think there was always going to be a bit of a risk as Fnatic were trying to unmask it down towards the Dragon to take that away. So weird movements from G2 and they get punished for it. I mean, just... Ultimately, Caps overstayed, but he thinks it's fine because he has TP. Mickey then tries to support him, but he puts himself in a terrible position with which Fnatic, wanting to contest that dragon, naturally find an opportunity to punish. So, a bit of a back and forth on the bot side of the map. We look back at the play. Oh, nice flash there from Hans. No, actually choosing not to flash away. Doesn't expect the damage from the ultimate auto combo from Hans Summer. The coaching staff naturally very excited about the result of that. I have to be, and of course that's the thing about the lethality of Aris, right? If you, you can dodge one or two of those key abilities and continue the trade, it's just so hard for him to fight back on even terms. Hansama getting closer to completing that second item now. We'll only get stronger, we'll only get more range as this game continues. Vygar there too, it's gonna be tough for Fnatic to get onto the enemy backline, even with champions like Azak or Xin Zhao. So see how they set up, but having two Drakes in their back pocket certainly does not feel bad. It'll be an Ocean Soul game. Fnatic, we can maybe see them group around the third and start to fight a bit more, maybe we see both teams start to look for these 5v5s. I think you just need more time as Fnatic. Humanoid needs to get into a position where he can really step up and be the carry, and that's realistically two and a half to three items. Noah has gone for the lethality build, which isn't bad in this situation, it's just he's not going to be the one that kills Broken Blade, who's... Join him. Flash handshake on the caps? This He's just solo making plays everywhere! <laughs> Judd's an absolute hero in this early game. That's the second R flash, maybe even third R flash we've seen from him in just a 15 minute game. Such a beast. I mean, Jun has been performing throughout playoffs and so far in this game, he's come to play. He has a 1.3k individual advantage. He has 100% kill participation. He oh, has yeah. been good on the handshakes. He really just continues good on the to be good. He's my supporter of Renata. R flashing to make plays in the mid game. No, he's been yeah. super impressive. And uh, he's given Fnatic a lifeline. Not to say that Fnatic were down and out by any means, but finding that play is huge. It puts them at a 2k gold lead once again. They secure a tower in the top lane. We look at the minimap and we can see Humanoid being sent down to bot. He needs to be careful that he's not overextending here as the rest of his team is resetting back out to the map. What's Jun up to? What's Razog up to? There to provide support, enabling Humanoid's aggression in the bot side of the map. And the evolution of Jun and Razog feels like it has been the evolution of Fnatic this season. We talked about it in the start of the year, Rob, especially on Euphoria. We wanted to see them work more together. And in playoffs in the last few series especially, it feels like 
they have been more and more in sync, especially when Razork has these more signature aggressive champions. I think it's setting up well here for Fnatic. They just have to be very careful that they're getting this mid lane terror down. Han Sama and Mickey, if you just whimsy Han Sama and he leaps at Noah and he's on his own, Noah dies. So Fnatic need to be very careful about protecting Noah as he goes for this mid wave, so then he doesn't get on the business end of some of the damage that can pop out from G2. As long as you can get mid lane tower down, Fnatic is kind of home sailing. They can start to shove in towers, they can play off of side lanes where they've got good uh, damage and good terror take with Humanoid. But they just have to be so careful around Noah. Try to keep track of the junglers as well. A full level now in favor of Razork. He's got about a 500 gold lead. You can see his both major items completed. But uh, a full level advantage for Razork is going to be really crucial as we get closer to that next dragon fight. The sooner you get to level 11, speaking of, Han Sama just ticking over, unlocks that second point in your ultimate. And for Razork, is going to be one of the primary initiators with Oscar right by his side. This next fight could be what determines a lot when it comes to the outcome of this game as the Herald gets dropped by G2 in the bot side. They're going to knock this tower down very likely before the charge even comes in. Maybe just use it on the second tower. G2, big push on the bottom side. It's going to force Fnatic to respond. Oscar topside does have TP if he wants to join the play. It sounds weird, but if, okay, Fnatic are actually going to go and look to play TP into the boss. They're looking for them. Clearing mid. There's not really great flank boards. It would be a very long flank. As Caps now pilots the Herald forward again. The hostile takeover from Jun. Nice oh. place, but only going to connect on the Caps. Noah now going to be in trouble. Here comes the Rek'Sai. The bailout doesn't look like it's going to be enough. And now Pro Points is trying to get out. Excuse me, Yike trying to get out. Bit of a comedic comedy of errors there, as Broken Blade's also going to whiff. Humanoid's going to flash, and now Oscar goes in for the re-engage. They burned everything! And now Fnatic are going to try to take over the fight, but Hansama is still standing, and that is going to be a problem for the side of Fnatic. Hansama not quite finding the angles to attack yet, though. Oscar running, Razork running, Caps still alive. They've taken down so many of the supporting members, but they haven't taken down the carries. The shutdown coming through for Hansama. The team fighting from G2 is so much better in that moment. Noah falls. Humanoid tries to make the play, immediately gets whimsy, it immediately ends up in the baby cage. And Han Sam is able to finish him off. There's just more damage left for G2. So it starts with Caps entering the, the Herald. Yai gets engaged on, but Han Sam's positioning is relatively safe here. Look at this ultimate from Jun splitting up G2 initially, but the damage from Caps is already done, giving Yai an angle onto the back line. Then they're trying to take down Noah before he can get the reset onto Yike, so it ends up being a one-for-one. One. But the cage in this enclosed space makes the fighting so hard for Fnatic that in the extended fight, Hansama is safe enough to clean up the kills and clean up the fight. And I feel like when we look at Hansama coming into the series, he wasn't where we expected to be focusing, especially in a lane swap. He is playing so aggressive, flashes into the face of Humanoid, gets the solo kill on a Noah mid lane. Wasn't the center of the story in this series, or wasn't expected, but... Completely showing up in this game one is Razork and Oscar looking to kick things off. Nice input buffer from Hansama takes him out to safety, but it's Caps who's now in trouble. Doesn't even get the cage down. Humanoid, no whimsy this time. Mickey, lamb to the slaughter as Fnatic set up for their third Drake. That's big picks for Fnatic. Managing to get the third Drake from the cells. Yes, it's an ocean dragon, but the objective control on this bottom side for Fnatic has been great. And catching G2 before they had their setup, before they had the vision control to spot out Fnatic. And now they're immediately going to turn over towards the Baron. Baron take isn't that great though, when Humanoid doesn't have a second item completed, and is still poke Varus. You have to be, be careful, careful here. This is fast enough though. Nashers, not something we see as much on his ear these days, but it does mean for a faster Baron overall. Yike into the pit, hostile take over there. Knockup is there. Razork not gonna let him have it now. Hansama needs to get the hell out. Knockup from Razork is clean though. He stops the jump. It's missed time by Hansama. G2 just have to walk away empty-handed. Three Drakes to Fnatic and a Baron buff to boot. It started off looking good for G2. They thought that they were going to be able to take control, find the team fights off of this Tristana, but it's fallen apart in Fnatic. They do a good job. Everyone just stops damaging the Baron. They do not cause any more. And then you have to just try and flip it as Yai, see how much damage you can get down. But this one comes in early. Six HP. Yeah, I thought four. Maybe I it mean, was six. It was crazy. I mean, the smite is what brought it that low. But Fnatic, their aggression is rewarded. And ultimately, we think back to when Fnatic is at their most successful, it's when Razork is leading the charge and you get down and dirty. And you know, uh, G2 is a team that's considered to be willing to scrap, but at that bottom dragon fight, they were caught completely off guard. Caps the first to fall and Fnatic snowballed that beautifully. Now they lead with kills, with gold, with a Baron to boot. 
Fnatic looking poised to take down this first game. And I think it's important to highlight Caps, an incredibly crucial part of this plan, but very immobile. No movement speed steroids, no defensive tools other than the KG has to play this flawlessly, but Broken Blade kicking things off, gonna get the two-man knockup. Not quite able to find the knockback. Oscar now looking for a bit of backup, but Humanoid is already dead. Caps uncontested on the back line. The Dark Matters are gonna start to fly left and right. Mickey coming in, Hot Sama ready to go over the wall, but Fnatic had more members in the area. Again, a two-man knockup! Somebody stop this side on Hot Sama, leaping in, knock back onto two! Noah wants to fire back, but he's just a little down, he Morris! He doesn't have the sustained DPS. Jun and Noah on the retreat. Oscar Renan as well. Jun might just have to give his life. The hostile takeover is big, though. Hansama needs to get away. He's tearing through Mickey's health bar, but it's Noah now. Hansama versus three. Tristana needs one reset, and there might be an opportunity to take over here. Discipline for Fnatic, and again, Jun in the clutch. Exactly. It is Jun at the very end of the fight that helped secure the victory for Fnatic. And even 2v2 is how it was supposed to round out. But if it weren't for Jun's play, this could have ended in disaster. A nice initial pick from G2. They find the jungle mid of Fnatic, and the damage from Caps is enough. But the moment that the rest of Fnatic join, it becomes this crazy brawl in the jungle. But watch Hansama here. He waits for the perfect moment. You can see he gets the bomb to Razork. The whimsy goes through. He jumps in, gets the knockback, which double hits both Oscar and Razork. The bomb goes off. He gets the reset and is able to then carry this fight through but Jun with the turnaround this guy has been absolutely fantastic this game he has been 5-0 on this Renata pick over the course of this year and he's shown why he is so clean on the Renata <laughs> same to be honest yeah what the heck is this I did not expect this much, uh, you know, this close of a game. Oh, and he's he caught clean from Noah. Follow up, is it going to be there? They don't quite have the damage. Noah got stunned in the middle of the wind up of his Q, so the piercing arrow never shot. He never got to use all three stacks and meant that he just fizzled. So the pick was so close, but that stun going off was massive. Still have the pressure, though. They're looking to continue the siege onto this top tier, too. Caps gone back to base, making his way back out. And it should be able to secure this before he can return. Dragon Soul on the card, one minute's time. Fnatic wisely going to reset, spend what gold they can, and get ready for the next play. You look at the bottom of your screen and you see all those gold advantages. And truthfully, the most impactful one I think right now is Razork. It feels like that the jungle difference is so massive. This Zin feels like this impossible carry to have to deal with in terms of what his ultimate provides and the lethality that he can bring, especially when he gets on top of caps. G2, it seems that they are floundering in the fights and Fnatic are more than happy to brawl with the top dogs of Europe. They absolutely are, but this goes all the way back to the early stages of the game. Fnatic, a clear game plan. Dive bought repeatedly. Razork a part of each and every one of those plays. Yike kind of responding. Fnatic don't opt to contest topside. They concede so much. Yike doesn't have an avenue to make the same dies, to find the same opportunities. As a result, he's put behind from a very early start. And now we're on to Seoul for Fnatic. Midway being crucial in this, both sides trying to get control of this. The Fnatic have a ton of vision, and G2, they need to try and break Fnatic. Knock up on the Jun, a decent start. Broken Blade locked up, Boris Ultimate hitting multiple people, and again, the hostile takeover is there. Razor got contested, the baby cage not in range, Cat flashing out to safety, but a clean far side alteration, anticipating the flashback, and another catch from Humanoid. G2 are being slaughtered in the mid lane at the hands of Fnatic, at the hands of Noah and Humanoid. Fnatic said we're happy to play your games, G2. We're happy to, to go against whatever you bring to the table. Because in game one, well, that was a little bit unfortunate. As they don't have a wave. I thought they were going to end the game. I thought that was going to be an epic monologue. But we look back at this fight, and it's just a one-sided affair. Broken Blade gets absolutely shattered at the hands of Fnatic. They melt through the front line. Yike is quick to follow behind, and then Caps left isolated with no front line to play behind. Look at Humanoid on the backside as well. Finds a nice slide and glide. Jun converts it into a beautiful handshake. And it's a handshake one deal for Fnatic. The hostile takeover hitting onto Han Sam as well meant that he just never was able to follow up on anything. It's just so perfectly done. You have to understand, that's the second fight in the row. Mickey X McHale's early. You can see the animation while Han Sama takes out 80% of his health bar. It was not a close fight. I don't know if that saves it, but those little mistakes only continue to cost you two more and more. And let's just appreciate, Jun is 2-0-22. This is the only has... time we will brag about someone with 313 team fight damage. But, <laughs> but that man is the carry. It might not look he like a hundred percent kill participation and has not made a single mistake in this game. Probably one of the best Renata performances we've seen from the LEC all year. 
and what a time to bring it out. In game one versus G2, Fnatic want to reclaim a title. It's been so long since they last had a chance. And uh, here in game one, they're looking good. We talk about momentum, we talk about the mood of the Fnatic team, how important it is for them to be successful. The mood has to be fantastic right now. 10K lead, Ocean Soul, a masterclass performance in the support position, backed by the entire rest of the team, and now, you just play it clean, you play it slow, you play it disciplined, and game one is yours. You're starting the series off in a way that no one expected. I mean, 2018 spring was the last time Fnatic ended up beating G2 in a finals. 2018 was the last time Fnatic finished first in a regular season. And now in 2024, it feels like history, at least in game one, is repeating itself as Fnatic have come out swinging in this game. And it's only a single game, but it's important to remember that the finals have been the cap show, regardless of which org has backed him. And so for Fnatic to get one step closer to winning a title again in a post-caps era, to prove that they are more than just the early days of League of Legends and the era of caps is a fantastic look for this organization. But it's a bit premature in this series. It's only a single game. G2 still have room to fight back in this one, but Oscar wants to end it here. Leaps in, is going to get two on the stun. Broken Blade does his best to interrupt. Cap still standing for a moment, but again, the ulti's coming in from Jun. The follow-up damage is there, and they're out of here. G2 got nothing left in game one. They tried the lane swap, but Fnatic were ready for it. They played it better. Jun everywhere on the map. The fight's cleaner. The tool's stronger. Fnatic, a show of dominance in game one. This will not be a quick 3-0. It will not be an easy first seed for G2. Fnatic are here to play. G2 have been rocked. And it is not with a fist, but with a handshake from Jun. This man has been so incredible, pivotal in this game to the success of Fnatic with the dives, with the team fights. And Fnatic are riding high off the back of that. Smile still on the faces of G2. They know they were beaten in game one. I'm expecting them to bounce back strong in game two. It's Fnatic versus G2. Fnatic starts strong. We'll continue after this break. You know it as well. I also know you can dance. You should join me next time. And yes, I feel like you've also deserved a bit of a break. You've earned it. Thanks. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Good job. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Hey, shouldn't you be on stage right now? Hey, you got a pick. Tom Kent? What? I, I was not expecting this. And a crazy off meta pick that secured you the win. How did you come up with it? Oh. Uh, I just listened to my gut. <laughs> 